ensuring that no help awaited the migrants at all was the entire point. They were provided with a cartoonishly simple map of Martha's Vineyard and the United States and a brief brochure containing snippets from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts website and instructions to change their address with USCIS when they relocated. This is especially troubling as anyone with even the most basic understanding of the immigration proceedings knows that USCIS was not the agency with whom the migrants would have to record their addresses and has nothing to do with their cases in any way. It is clear that this was an intentional attempt to ensure that these migrants were removed in absentia when they failed to change their address with the proper agency. This was a purposeful derailment designed to prevent people from complying with federal immigration policies. This is problematic because the state should not be interfering with federal immigration policy. Oh, that nefarious plan by uh, uh, Ron DeSantis down in Florida to, to send 50 migrants, Venezuelan, I believe, migrants, up to Martha's Vineyard has been shifting from a PR, I believe, disaster to then maybe potentially a legal one. As you see there, Rachel Self, one of the attorneys that is representing many of the folks out there that have been put out in the middle of nowhere with uh, no plan actually they were lied to to get there, which we'll get into more details as well. Rachel will, that attorney there. But she pointed out one thing that I want you guys to remember there. They falsified addresses and where they may end up and lied to them of where they were going and then making sure they're going to sabotage their immigration status. All that was happening as a part of this move also to say we're going to stick it to those rich libs. Uh, Rachel Self, that attorney, she went on and she said more. There was a lot more happening here. Let's watch. Before they boarded the planes, the migrants were processed by agents of the Department of Homeland Security who listed falsified addresses on the migrants' paperwork. Agents apparently chose random homeless shelters all across the country from Washington to Florida to list the migrants' mailing addresses, even when told by the migrants that they had no address in the U.S. According to the paperwork provided to them, the migrants are required to check in with ICE office nearest to the fake address chosen for them by DHS or be permanently removed from the United States with some required to check in as early as this coming Monday. It could not be clearer that this is an attempt to ensure that these people are ordered removed, even as they try as hard as they can to comply with the instructions provided to them. There is no other reason to list as someone's mailing address a homeless shelter in Tacoma, Washington, when they ship him to Massachusetts. The manipulation for people continues and the setup to make sure there's a disaster and chaos orchestrated by this particular party, in this case, particularly Ron DeSantis, and then have it blow up and then complain about it. All for election politics is the most disgusting part here. But here are some of those legal issues that I was talking about. Because Lawyers for Civil Rights, LCR, it's a Boston-based group, and it represents 30 of the 48 people flown from Texas to Martha's Vineyard on Wednesday. They said individuals working in concert with state officials, including the Florida governor, made numerous false promises to the migrants, including of work opportunities, schooling for their children, and immigration assistance in order to induce them to travel. Now, the same group LCR has written to the U.S. Attorney uh, Rachel Rollins and the Massachusetts Attorney General Mara Healy, requesting, listen to this, that they open, in, they open some criminal investigations. And they say, we strongly believe that criminal laws were broken by the perpetrators of this stunt. And in a statement, LCR also said, this cowardly political stunt has placed our clients in peril. Upon arrival, numerous individuals had to be rushed to the hospital in need of medical care. Some now have immigration hearings as early as Monday, thousands of miles away, as you saw that attorney Rachel Self point out there. Lastly, it was only uh, it was only when the plane was midair, among the more disgusting things they did to these folks, that people were told that they were headed to Martha's Vineyard and not Boston, it's according to LCR. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has denied that the migrants were duped, claiming that they signed waivers knowing where they were going. Sure, Ron. Uh, also knowing that they were going to be put with uh, addresses that didn't exist with where they were going and also that their status would have to be trying to follow up in places across the country in no way of getting there as well. Did they know all that too, Ron? I don't know how this defense is going to continue to work for them, uh, Jessica. There's more details here, but I'm wondering what your first thoughts are here with what's going on, the legal issues, and if this is really taking hold for how bad it really looked. 
Yeah, seeking asylum is legal in the United States. And this title of illegal immigrants, I can't believe they're still using it. These people are legal asylum Mm -hmm. seekers. And why they're freeing Venezuela is something that can be tracked to the actions of the United States. In 2002, we know that the CIA, we have declassified documents evidencing this. They tacitly supported the, the coup. That's as far as we know now. Uh, we might find out a few years in the future, once more documents get declassified, that we actually really did support the coup with more than just words uh, in 2002 against Hugo Chavez. For for about a half a century, the 70s, 60s, the 50s, and the 80s in Latin America, we destabilized the region. We could every country that was politically inconvenient. And when finally the politics within the United States caught up with that and people in the U.S. were pretty unhappy with how we had run our foreign policy, we decided to go with embargoes instead. So in many ways, the conditions that people are fleeing in Venezuela were the United States' fault to start with. Of course, we know how this works. And after it happens, then you talk about demonizing, continue to demonize people, continue to say that they're garbage and they're worthless. How dare they come up here and screw up our country? If you didn't see what Tucker Carlson said late last week, if you're squeamish, don't, because he's a disgusting individual. By the way, a little more information about this, because half of the whole thing here was to make sure we send these migrants up there and show those libs just how disgusting they are. They hate them too, right? I want to reiterate this because we mentioned it last week, because that kind of backfired too. A young man used a cell phone on Thursday to record a message to the Florida governor. Listen, Ron DeSantis, one more Venezuelan, one more Venezuelan speaking here is what he said, turning to film the crowd that had come to see the migrants flown by the state of Florida to Martha's Vineyard and the Episcopalian Church, where they were now sleeping, eating, and praying. And well, just grateful for the little prank you pulled on us. You hit a home run because they were actually being embraced and taken care of to the degree that they could with this kind of surprise that was given to the folks that were there. More about this. Local church officials and politicians also rushed to help. TV cameras on tripods overtook a small one-way street in front of the St. Andrew's Episcopal Church where the families had taken up temporary shelter. Neighbors biked or walked their dogs to witness the scene for themselves. Inside St. Andrew's, volunteers walked in and out all day in shifts. They accepted food. They took in bags of candy. They accepted warm clothes. Staff from the Salvation Army pledged to stay as long as it takes. Lastly, to these wonderful people who find themselves plain wrecked on our island, I have a message for all of them, is what Rachel Self said. You are not alone. We have your backs. We're proud to be here for you. Now, maybe that's more political grandstanding is what many conservatives will say, but the folks that were there, they're seeing some kind of assistance despite all the lies they were told to get them up there because they don't see them as real human beings. Disgusting stuff, man, and maybe even illegal. I hope we get to that point, too. Yeah, I think the the interesting part about this is that the type of liberals that live in Martha's Vineyard are people who will say things like, yeah, we absolutely support migrants coming here and having a good life, and we are very different from conservatives. And they kind of like this performative stunt where for a few days they bring these people in, they take care of them, they get a bunch of good press about it, and then they're put on the ferry going back, and then they don't think about mass deportation and ICE detention centers and actually giving people who need a path to life Uh, or a path to a better life, the resources necessary to do that and the policies necessary so working people can live good lives in this country. Mm. So as much as, you know, they kind of won in the PR battle against the conservatives, they're still like not the heroes of the story completely. Where's that next step? Again, uh, I'm glad you point out this way. What's that next step in solving that particular problem? Because my last point on this is millions of dollars were being put together to send folks via bus, we're gonna send them folks to DC, via plane here to send folks to Martha's Vineyard. Think about what that money could be used as far as solving the problem. If you really believe there's a problem, the problem that exists, they want to continue to exploit it. Why solve a problem when you can use it to win political uh, races? That's the stance of the Republican Party.